Next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel for the vehicle. So this is going to be a full walk around on the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen. So first thing to point out, the steering wheel might be manual or it might be a power, just depending on which version of the vehicle that you're in. This one is power telescoping, so we can go in and out, up and down. You can hear it go in there. And that's just a switch that would be right above where our left knee would be. Stick on the left hand side there is going to let us figure out what's going on with our front as well as our rear windshield wipers. We're going to pull so there's a little sticks for that middle wiper. We're just going to pull that all the way down in order to get the rear wiper fluid going. And then for the front windshield wiper fluid going, we've got a button on the very tip of that stick in order to get that front windshield wiper fluid going instead. So pretty straightforward there. No stick whatsoever along the right hand side. Now we do have a series of different options as well, looking at cruise control. So we do at least have our base regular cruise control, and then this one has the added package for the adaptive cruise. So we can easily toggle that system on or off there. So you can see along the very bottom right hand side of that screen, it's coming on as necessary. So that means that the system's turned on, but we've got another one. So we see our car kind of adjusting as necessary there. That's how close or how far away do we want to be from the vehicle that's in front of us. Typically, I find that two is generally pretty safe, but it's going to be a matter of personal preference. We've also got our lane keeping system, so we can toggle this thing on or off. We can see a little button there that kind of hides as necessary. But what, that ha what happens is as the vehicle hits about 64 kilometers an hour, those are going to go green. Once they're green, if we start to veer over into a lane without signaling, it'll give us a little nudge back into our lane, or it'll give us a little bit of a steering wheel shake, or it can do a mixture of both. So it's going to depend on how you have it set up all through that media screen. So this gorgeous Sync 4 media screen that's new for the 2022 model year. So, a few other things. Once you come up to your preferred speed, so the system's turned on, you just press set in the either increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. So it's very straightforward and very similar to our regular cruise control with the difference that this one is, if it re recognizes a vehicle in front of you is going slower, it'll automatically lower your speed as well. So it's a very smart system there. If you ever have to press the brake yourself, you can just resume there. You can exit out if you want to very simply. We can press the buttons along the side on top of that. So you've got quite a few options available. We can also increase or decrease the volume there very simply, but listen to this. Car shaking, 22 speaker amazingness that's in, available inside of this. Now this one, the reason why it's got so many different features and so many options is that this is the Platinum Max. So it's literally the highest available trim level available in Canada and the States, but it is amazing. Now, a lot of these basic features, like I said, regular crews will be there and the lower trims regardless. We've got a voice command prompt so we can do things like change songs, radio stations, and navigate using our voice. But one of the great things about this new Sync 4 media screen is that we can also have it listen for a wake word. So we can say something like, OK, Ford. And as you can see there, didn't press the voice command prompt, but it still gave us that option instead. Now, if we were connected through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we could also do a long press and hold there in order to activate either our Google or our Siri Assistant paddle on the right hand side. Very bottom buttons are going to let us change between songs, radio stations, or our active presets. We can also do a press and hold if we want to seek that way instead. So just basic press and hold. You can kind of see the numbers going a little crazy along the top of the screen there. And like I said, we can go between our presets just by simply pressing one or the other. And that's going to jump us between our AM, FM, Sirius, XM, etc. Whatever our presets are that we have available. We do also have our answer hang up on a phone call button. So very simple there. And the steering, the steering wheel itself might be heated, just depending on which version of the vehicle you're in. It was turned on, and this thing is getting a little bit toasty all the way around. We do have another pad along the right-hand side, so along the top, I should say, and that's going to let us navigate through this cluster screen in the middle there. So we can press the basic back button, we've got our base up and down buttons, and then we've got our menu button. So a few different options that are available, and let's kind of go through all of the different options that would be available directly in that middle screen. All right, and here we go. So tons of different options that are available in this screen. So as you can see there, we've got our base driver assistance settings. We can press this base back button there in order to get to different options, but a few, well, quite a few different things that are available. Starting off, we've got our My View. So we've got our base driver assistance. We can go up and down. So fuel economy, we can press and hold the OK button there in order to be able to reset. So it resets us there. Same idea with our trip counter. So we just press and, press and hold OK to reset our trip counter. And then we can also remove and edit screens. So if we want to have multiple uh, trip counters there, if we want to have our tire pressure, seat belts, off-road status, power distribution, and a few other things, we've got the flexibility to do it. So as you can see there, we have more options now. 
So we go down, we've got our trip one, two, but we also added in our seatbelts. So we can see who's got their seatbelt currently plugged in. We can also see our pitch and roll. So if we're going off road, very useful. We've got our power distribution, so we can see which wheel is getting which amount of power. And then we can also reconfigure the view from there. And then we press this menu button and that gives us even more views. So we've got our, again, our base trip counter. So we've got our fuel economy, trip one, two, our start stop, and then our driver assistance back again into our vehicle information. So we've got our current tire pressure. So as you can see there, a little bit wonky on a few of the wheels, but we can move down. So we have a few different options. We can move down this way to get to different pages, or if we move back, it gives us those same pages. So it's gonna be a matter of how do you wanna look at it. Power distribution, our engine information, seat belts, and then again, back to our driver assistance, which are the same ones that we're gonna see as we go through. We've got our towing information there. So we've got our trailer info, which as of right now, we don't have a trailer connected to the vehicle, so that makes sense. Our trailer light status, no trailer detected. We've got our trailer gain there. So we can see, make sure that the vehicle is perfectly balanced as we go. As you get into heavier tows, you may want to look at a weight distribution hitch instead. Then again to our driver assistance. And from there, I think that was it for the towing. Perfect. We've got our navigation options. So a few different places, so we can say navigate home. We can look at any previous destinations. And if we do. Please drive to highlighted route. Perfect. So along the very top of the screen there, it lets us know where we're gonna be going next. And then it also act automatically brings up the map over on the right hand screen there as well. But moving back into our navigation, we can now cancel the route if we want. Going back inside, we could look at that previous destination again. We could look at favorites, point of interest icons that might be nearby. So if you need gas, we've got quite a few different options that are available there. Or you could also press the voice command prompt and say navigate to a gas station, navigate to a restaurant, coffee shop, whatever the case may be. Back again, we've got phones. So as of right now, I do have my phone connected. So that's going to be the iPhone I've got connected right now. If you want to know how to connect a phone to this screen, check down below for that walkthrough instead, but it's very straightforward. We've got all my calls, outgoing, incoming, missed calls, etc. Audio, it's what sources are currently available. So we've got AM, FM, Sirius XM. Live One is a radio app that's on my phone. So certain radio apps will automatically work through this screen, but not all of them. So Spotify won't work. You have to just be connected over regular Bluetooth in order to stream that way instead. And then we've also got my audio there. We've got some options for settings now. So we have some gauges along the very top, but we could also show and hide our selectable gauges. So if you wanna swap these out, if you wanna change the gauge there, you've got the flexibility to be able to do it. Same idea, right versus left gauge, we can adjust as necessary. So whether we show the turbo boost, etc. Back, we've got our speed. So as of right now, showing in kilometers only, and we can switch it up so that it shows both kilometers and miles. And then if we're towing the vehicle, so we can enter our neutral tow mode very simply by press, uh, by navigating through. But if you want to know how to set up neutral tow, check down below for that walkthrough directly through the Ford guide instead. But I know there's quite a few different things that are covered off there, but that's going to be the basics of what you need to know inside of the steering wheel and cluster for the 2022 Expedition.